this stuff um, with the whole, all the allegations with Vince McMahon, with the lawsuit filed by Janelle Grant, with all the videos that I've done in the past um, two and a half weeks, I think it's probably been quite clear what I think, you know, my take on this and who I believe is, you know, guilty and who I, and who I think, you know, totally an, an innocent party. And yeah, yes, I, I do believe um, Janelle Grant. I, I do believe her to be the victim in this. But what of... What if there's the possibility that Vince, um, Vince might be innocent? Now, not necessarily I'm saying innocent with everything, with all the, um, allegations, because I believe there's many things that he's definitely, um, d definitely guilty of, but innocent in the sense that in his mind, it wasn't him being, um, in this, you know, call it, call it a relationship, that it wasn't abusive and coercive. And that she was happy with Vince. And it, and it was to him, he, 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 he they, they were both having, a, you know, a really good time. You know, there was love there. Um, obviously, there's a weird way of showing it with some, with some of these, you know, body activities. But, Vince, though, didn't believe that he was, he he was, you know, that Janelle Grant in this relationship, that she was the victim in, in this abusive relationship that she claims it to be. Um, I mean, to me, there's, there's questions there. And there's, I mean, I mean, for num number one, you know, the, the three million pound settlement it was the three million pounds it was going to have for that he was going to pay Janelle Grant for her for her silence essentially, and only one million got paid. So it is a big question there: why only pay one million? Why um why not pay it, pay it all off? Um, you know it was already all, all out there about these a accusations, and initially, I think he tried to, you know. You know, he was no selling it. Essentially, when I say no selling it, he wasn't acknowledging the the allegations. You know, he was going out of his way to go out on the opening of SmackDown and Raw, and you know, the fans were lapping him up. But maybe, just maybe, maybe he didn't pay the whole three million pound settlement because he he believed, in a sense, in some respects, that he was innocent on some things. And he was like, okay, I'll pay you that, but I'm not going to pay you all that. Again, I don't know. I'm just speculating. I mean, another theory, and I know on Vince Russo, his channel, they've talked about this, that um, basically, you know, there was the merger, you know, with UFC. Now it's, you know, you know that company, Endeavor, that Ari Emanuel is the CEO of, you know, it's now TKO, the parent company. And, you know, Vince and Ben Hameen, Steve Richards, they've been saying, well, you know, it was Ari Emanuel. They've, they said to Vince, hey, don't worry about this. We'll deal with this. We'll deal with the additional payments. But then something's obviously gone wrong there that, you know, the, the payments aren't, the additional payments weren't made. And then they even, he, he, Vince even has the conspiracy theory that, you know, that they actually smartened her up you know, with this and what's, what was exactly, what exactly was going to go down and how this was going to get public and, and it would come out and, and she would be, the woman, she would be revealed. Um, again, I don't know, that, that is a little bit of a f out there feeling that I don't fully buy into. Um, but again, the question has to, has to be asked though, what happened there? Why weren't the additional payments made to Janelle Grant? I don't think it was just a case of it being a, a glitch in the system, do you? Um, and another thing with this whole thing here with the the woman Janelle. Now, Janelle Grant apparently, um, I don't know her exact age exactly, but people are saying that what she was at the time she met McMahon, she was like thirty eight. So now she'd be like forty two, going on forty three. And, you know, I've heard other podcasters, YouTubers speak about this and say, well, you know, can she really be groomed then? Um, they've asked that question. Can they? Really, can you really be groomed when you're that at that age? And I believe it was 
the, the, the Eugene character Nick Dinsmore, he believed, yeah, you, you, you can be still groomed. And I tend to believe that, that she was in a vulnerable position, um, lost both her parents, was in bad place financially. Um, so no doubt in, 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 in that respect, she would have been. Um, I, but, but, you know, one thing that, you know, with this Janelle Grant, there's a, there's a photograph, and this is the main photograph you see of Janelle Grant here. Um, and this is the photo that's all out there that, you know, this is on Daily Mail and all the other, you know, like mainstream publications. Well, when they're talking about this, they have this picture of Janelle Grant. And I don't think there's any of her pictures you find online in Janelle Grant. You know, sort to do some real digging and go stalking on, on, on social media. But in this picture here, when I saw it, I thought, to me, she looks at least, she could, she could pass for somebody in her mid-20s, right? But they're saying though that she's um, she's she's now like early forties, um, and again I don't know when this photograph was taken. Um, it t I imagine it's a fairly recent photo, um, but yeah. So I don't know what is, is this just a thing of passing off, trying to pass her off as just a sweet, innocent young girl? Because in my mind, when I was thinking Janelle Grant the girl, I'm thinking a girl that was like mid to late 20s in my head. So when I heard about the age of her, what well, well, she was like late 30s, early 40s, that did kind of surprise me a bit. Um, so, and then you just get this one photo of her out, but I think there is maybe one other picture of her out there that's a little grainy and she's wearing glasses, I think. But this is, you know, this is the one photograph, and I think most people, I, I mean, tell, tell me, guys, I swear to God, she looks like she could be 25. Um, so, again, I don't know. Is there something there going on there with the, the media and an agenda there to paint a, part, a certain picture? Because there's a lot of people that have it in for Vince McMahon, and... And a lot of people have had it in for Vince McMahon for years. He he has made many enemies, and um, it goes back even to the stuff with the federal government and the the um, uh, with the whole steroid scandal. And he beat the federal government, and he only had a what was like a three percent chance of winning. Um, so maybe at that point, you know, when he beat the federal government, he thought he was bulletproof, you know. And then you know, so when this stuff came up. He was like, nah, fuck it, you know, I'll survive it, I'll be okay. But I don't know. I, fe I felt like Vince should have, well, I mean, he certainly should have known better. Again, if he just decided not to not make to not make the payments, it's kind of odd, right? Um, Yeah, it's like, there's got to be a reason the payments stopped being made. But then I just posed the question, well, why? Did Vince feel... No, this is kind of bullshit. She's she wasn't exactly innocent on this, and whiter than white, she went along with this. Um, he maybe felt he really did at one point kind of love her, um, and cherished her company. I don't know. I really don't know. Again, these are just certain questions I'm putting out there to kind of play devil's advocate. But I still overall think it doesn't look good, and it was just a thing there that you know Vince. Yeah, he, he just used her like a toy. But I just wonder, though, like, I wonder if Janelle Grant, if she, did she maybe feed into his fantasies, though? That's a question I've got. Because we see all, um, a lot of texts from Vince in that lawsuit with the screenshots. And we do see a couple from Janelle Grant. But I just wonder if there's more j messages there from Janelle Grant that would maybe show you, well, well, did she maybe feed into this stuff? Did she joke a lot about it to Vince? Did she set him off? On this, on you know, I, I, because some of this stuff, like you, you, you could maybe see, like the whole talk about her and him saying about how he wanted her underwear to be ripped off and whatever. It's like, well, people, a lot of dudes could talk dirty like that, no doubt. When you're getting into that stuff about oh, you want to see other men have sex with. That's some proper weird shit. I've never, had, I've never had a thing for that. I've never been into that kind of thing of a woman, a girl that I'd be with, and I'm like thinking in my mind, oh, I'd love to see other dudes be with her. It's like, no, that's just, that's just freaking weird. But there's certain, there's certain things because on the lawsuit, you know, 
the one that I, the, the most disturbing text is when he says, if I see you, I will R-A-P-E you in the hallway. But in that lawsuit, that's, they put that down as a text message that he sent her, but there wasn't a screenshot of that text messages, uh, of that text message. So I wonder, was that tech, is that text message still there? Do they still have a record of that? Is that one, was that, did, did she at that point delete that after seeing it and just thinking that's proper fucked up? I, I just don't even want to see that at, at all and, and just, poof, deleted it from her phone. I don't know. Because I find that a little odd that like, she had screenshots of the other text messages, but then there was other messages put down there, but there wasn't a screenshot of them. So, I, I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, just a lot of questions with this, because, you know, I, I was watching um, a, a, a lot of clip from Keeping It 100, and it was Conan and, and this, you know, the show that Conan and Disco Inferno do, and they were thinking that maybe, well, there was a question that somebody had for them, and they were asking, well, did Triple H set Vince McMahon up? Was this all, did Triple H engineer this whole thing for it to get out there? So then McMahon would ultimately step step down and he could get control and power so i'll play this clip right here so let me know what you think no, something's inside job what's up k100 joe from wisconsin here with the theory of the visit man scan we've all heard for years and shoot interviews that vince will never walk away he'll have to die first before stepping aside you think it's possible that triple h and nick Conn want to take the business in another direction and vince was stuck in his ways as a result triple h or someone from the inside reached out to the potential victims encouraged them to step forward and offer support that can bring vince down to me, it doesn't seem that far-fetched. What do you guys think? It's all speculation. We don't know. Thanks, Joe from Wisconsin. I don't. I, I actually don't know what the other girls can help them with if they signed an NDA. You, you know what I'm saying? Right. I, I mean, I don't but, really know exactly how that works. Yeah, but if you remember, something had come out that those NDAs weren't valid for some reason. Well, hers wasn't because she stopped paying them. Okay. They stopped paying her, right? So that right. they said that nullifies the... NDA, but the other ones, the other ones from years and years ago. Well, bro, the Pretty fact so, that right. he's paying various women money, right. what does that tell you? Well, he was obviously having affairs with them, and it, that's really kind of unbelievable, you know? Like, like all these people that he just has an affair with, and can you, you just pay the money to keep quiet? Right. Well, he's got <laughs> the money. That, that's not, kind of, of course it does, and I would suggest, I'm not going to be naive, I think this is very kind of commonplace amongst people with a lot of money. You know, 100%. I would, I would suggest. Yeah, because they're just like, hey, right. I'll, I'll buy their silence. Right. Yo, yeah, so, is you know, with that, with what they're saying there, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, they're saying like it's common, but they're saying it like in a way as if like, you know, well, that it might not necessarily be that it was, you know, sexual assault there. It was just a relationship. Vince being a married man, didn't want it, and, and just being the owner of the company and that image, didn't want it to be public, so he decided to pay it off and get a non-disclosure agreement signed. Um, I, I understand where they're coming from, but I don't, I don't, I don't agree with that. You know, the whole thing, what they were saying there, or oh, whether the NDAs are enforceable or not, um, I believe it was two years ago in the States, there was an act that was signed that, you know, NDAs... If it's an NDA that's in relation to sexual mis misconduct, sexual assault, that isn't fully enforceable. So, you know, if women had signed NDAs, I believe they can speak out. I don't know for sure. Can't exactly remember. This is after the act's been signed, or it still applies to when it was for, you know, NDAs being signed prior to that act that was done two years ago. Um, but. I mean, the question though was, you know, Vince, the Triple H set Vince McMahon up. That was a, that was a question I had because I, I felt, you know, it was very funny in 2021 when all of a sudden, you know, Triple H and Bruce, uh, sorry, uh, Vince McMahon and Bruce Pritchard take over uh, NXT, which was seen as, you know, Triple H, Triple H's baby, right? And then all of a sudden, people like Jeff Jarrett, people like Road Dogg, and a few other people that are like known as Triple H allies, uh, William Regal was another one. They'd all let go. And I remember, and because Nick Aldis actually spoke about it on their podcast, Keeping It 100, it, it looked like at that time, systematically his power was being taken all away from him, Triple H. And that's why I, I thought maybe with the theory of, you know, could Triple H at that point, his power has been taken away from him, then he went out of his way to make this public, knowing all this stuff, knowing the dirt, knowing where the bodies are buried, so to speak, that he was the one 
that tipped off the Wall Street Journal, and, and that, that's how all this came public back in June 2022. You never know. He, he could have been a bit vindictive like that, even if it's the, as the guy is, you know, that is, um, that's his father-in-law. You never know. I wouldn't have put, I wouldn't put it past Triple H to be like that. And I had said something in another video before, because I, I was one asking, wondering, you know, how much, how many women had he had, he had paid off, you know, with, with these non-disclosure agreements. And it was, because I found the article here, this was from back in 2022, it was four women. This was four women over the last 16 years, so from 2006 onwards, the Wall Street Journal reported. Um, and yeah, so there was speculation about this at the time that, you know, 7.5 million, that's a lot of money. And that was a former wrestler who alleged Vince McMahon coerced her to give an oral sex and later declined to renew her contract. Um, and some people speculated about that, and I'll just say that it was it was someone that was on um, uh, that Diva Search show. She won it, and then she later on went to work for TNA. So you probably know who it is. Um, that's what pe some people have speculated that it's her. And they're saying here one million for a woman who worked as a WWE contractor, and she said she received unsolicited nude photos. We'd heard about that. He, 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 well, he was showing nude photos of himself to the, uh, that woman in the Tanza bar. Who, you know, that whole thing that was back in 2006. And then a third uh, in the amount of one million to a former manager who worked with McMahon for a decade. Um, so, you know, a manager, not, you know, on screen manager, you know, a legit, you know, like in the office. It's one thing I, I, I was thinking to myself, you know, with Vince McMahon, if he was always this way, I was always kind of like, I look back and think, well, would Vince have maybe not tried to get more female wrestlers in the company? And then if he was inclined that way and wanted to, you know, but maybe he just didn't, he wasn't smart enough at the time to think that, you know, Vince, but Vince, maybe it was, maybe it was very common Vince about, you know, women and, and the assistants and the whole you know the whole cliche with the with the rich guy and his his secretary that he's shagging you know it's it's it, it happens it happens in the corporate world it happens in hollywood happens in music yeah it's it's out it it it, it, it goes down but um like <laughs> i mean i mean it, it was all there to see with the stuff with trish stratus with stacy keebler Tony Wilson, and I just wonder if they got stories, did stuff go down there off screen? You know, if Vince is doing this with many women, what Vince, you know, did Vince, he, he didn't ever crack on to Trish Stratus, Stacey Keebler, Tony Wilson? I don't know. I don't know. It's like, you just never know. But I don't know. I, I get the feeling like certain people like Trish Stratus would never talk about it, you know. I don't know even if um, uh, Tory Wilson would talk about it, you know? Um, you know, you had the thing with Sable, and it's funny because the funny thing with the whole thing with Sable, because being that she's married to Brock Lesnar, and he's kind of connected to this whole thing that he was almost going to meet this Janelle Grant woman. And then you had Sable, who had filed a $100 million lawsuit back in 1999. And it was all sorts of stuff about you know, sexual harassment and... And I don't, it wasn't exactly directly to Vince McMahon, but it was more about stuff that it was kind of like seen as like acceptable that, you know, men could peeve in the women. And and there was a the whole from the, the men in the women's locker room, they're right by each other, but the people, guys would be a hole there and they'd peeve in and stuff like that. But it was very strange though with the Sable thing because I know um, the on-screen relationship that he had with Sable, you know, and I think even at the time I felt like, and I was only young, yeah, I was like 13, I felt like something's going on there for real, I don't know. Like, and Too Cold Scorpio told a story that Vince McMahon said one time when all the boys were out and he, they got talking about Sable and he said, you know, I'm going to F that bitch one day. And um, I don't know, I don't think the guy's lying, you know. I, 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 I don't think he's lying. But with this, you know, I, I just thought to do, with this video, I'd be a bit more objective on this stuff, or try to be at least, and look at look at it from both sides of the coin. But I still think with most of this stuff, it could be from almost all of this stuff, um, or pretty much, or just all of it, 
that it that it is true. I do believe her. I do believe Janelle Grant on almost all of this. I would say, or actually, hell, I'll go. I'll say all of it. Um, but the thing is, if this, you know, there will be questions there. And McMahon's lawyer, even though it's not Jerry McDivitt now, will will make it a point to to rip it to rip into her in court. And it will be that question. It'll be, well, you know, why did you stay? Why, you know, he wasn't putting a gun to your head. And, um, and again, she might really struggle with that. It could be a very, you know, you know, emotional moment for an in court. People can just crack in, 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 in those cases. Um, but that's my, uh, that's my video for now on this stuff, guys. So, um, feel free to leave a comment, um, click the like, hit, uh, click the subscribe button. And yeah, but stay tuned though, because I'll, 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 I'll try and always do a da daily video with all this stuff, with the, the wrestling related stuff. But um, that's me for now, guys. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Bye.